are recording. How good. Da-dush. Yeah, go on, Jimbo. Jimbo. Just lie there. Baby. Paint me like one of your French girls, would you? Oh, God. Good. Mate. Let, really me just bu- let me just button up a little bit. It's getting real warm outside. Yeah, it's warm outside, isn't it? Out in London as well. Jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm flopped. <laughs> I've got, got Whiskey Mike. Whiskey Mike sounds like a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing, boys? What we got here, Clemmie? Uh, we got a whispering angel to start off the day. Right. Um, well, whilst you're unscrewing that, hello and welcome. Uh, now, we're a bit upset because we did have a guest for today. Yeah. Um, James. Fell through last minute. Fell through the very last second. He's, he's uh, off the Paris Fashion Week, I heard. Yeah, yeah, well, the issue was that he showed up wearing exactly the same thing as I was wearing. Really? Uh, to, down to it, literally everything. Um, and said, oh, I can't do this. Right. Um, and that being uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, so Lewis isn't joining us. We tried to get Roscoe on as well, but he just didn't feel like speaking today. No. So uh, Lewis and Roscoe fell through last second. Gutted. Um, and uh, we didn't really have a backup guest. I mean, there was, there was not much... Um, Sort of demand to come on. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why. Neither, eh? No. Um, But it was quite difficult to get anyone, actually. I was surprised Lewis said yes, but... um, Well, Lewis said yes only because Nico Rosberg also said yes. That's true. So, um, but here we are. Anyway, um, yeah, mate, you're looking very suave today. You got your hair not not slicked back like usual. Looks like it's... Uh, I've uh, no no running water at my place this morning, so I had to make do with the old... uh, Local toilets. Right. <laughs> Local <laughs> toilets? <laughs> yeah. What, what's, you mean like a public? Park? Yeah. Hyde yeah. <laughs> okay. Park. Jesus. What, what did you get up to last night? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mate. But <laughs> 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 Anyways. You are looking a bit... Um, it's a bit rosy in the cheeks, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was going to say, you don't, you don't look fresh. Ah, I've just come back from lunch. You look a bit steamed. No, not quite. It's been a, it's been a rough couple yeah, of months. I've never got an insurance lunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Insurance yeah, yeah. lunch. You were just telling me, mate, that you've um, you've actually already had two of these. No, just the one. Just the one? Yeah. Bottle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, grass. <laughs> Classic. All right, well, let's crack on, fellas. What are we going to chat about today? Because we've got quite a lot to catch up on. Yes. Um, since last time we filmed all together in this room, we've kind of, we've literally been around the world, um, mm. metaphorically and physically. Yeah. Um, where, should we, where do we start? Do you want to kick it off? I, I wanted to ask you, James... Um, Hey, thanks, Clem, by the way. Rory's here as well. James, you're wearing a whoop band. I am. Uh, are you sort of a, a bit of a fitness freak now? A bit of a fitness nut, as they say. In- uh, yeah, well, they always talk about fitness goals. Right. And I decided as I rapidly approached my 26th birthday that I am due a new fitness goal, mm. which is to not die in my 30s. So if I make it to 41, I've achieved my goal. Hey, cheers, boys. Cheers, cheers mate. Oh. Cheers, Dad. Good to see you. Just screaming meals. Reunited, it feels so good. Hey, cheers, Rory. Good to see you, mate. Cheers. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm running out of the old whoop band now, so I'm, I'm going to the gym at our place mm-hmm. t- maybe twice, three times a yeah. week. This is a sight to behold. James Blair in a gym. Oh, mate. Is like a fish on land. <laughs> yeah, that, man, <laughs> that man does not belong in a gym he's not very coordinated i haven't but i've 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 got a, a picture firmly in my mind of a, oh, a man sitting on his your bench brain. there and uh, holding his eight kilo in each hand and what sort of exercises <clears> does he do he does a lot of pec work does he <laughs> he has got moves i must say <laughs> got a yeah. few moves there yeah just trying to trim the fat do you want to show us just lift your shirt up a way not particularly to show honest. show every all of our screaming meals. i'll get i'll get my rig out if you two get yours out you want to really compare rigs here go and give me like a visual Mate, you know actually i'll tell you what if we whilst we're throwing people under the bus go before on. that tiktok that we did in the pool before we did our commentary mm. clem had to bust out about 65 push-ups oh, crunches, hey. like everything going you on you know how it is you you, you, you gotta do a bit of the old work <laughs> you've before, got to before I, the so old fit I, I extended you the same courtesy i expect the same back exactly i did the same mate get on your push-ups there james yeah yeah start uh, early after this so, so you do a bit of pec work at the gym, mm-hmm. um, bit of bicep curls, I suppose. Yesterday I did legs. What? Mm. What? <laughs> you were on the old leg press. Well, there, there was a bunch of rugby looking player looking people. Really? And doing the weights area, so I thought I'm having no none of that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you're a New Zealander, mate. You should be uh, 
you should be in there with the uh, with the backbones with, with the backbones doing a few lifting the big numbers yeah 120 kgs yeah. on your back yeah no no uh, so the only there, there was a machine free that was it was a cycle bike and I, thought, I don't fancy that and then there was the leg press machine. a cycle bike and that's quite fun because you sort of go up and down and up and it's almost like an amusement park ride but it's painful <laughs> see <laughs> The funny thing about going to the gym with James is that as I'd finished my sort of second set, second superset there for the old chest and, and the old triceps. You are looking good, by the way, Clem. James had already finished his actual session. So i just Look, done my second set. James is there going, come as, on, Clem, let's head to the spa. As an athlete, yeah. you know you're in danger when you're comparing your workouts to mine. Oh no! I am not the yardstick that you should be measuring yourself up. No, to it's just it's just the the fact that you were like, yeah, let's go to the gym together, and I didn't expect to be in and out inside of sort of ten minutes. Yeah, but, but when I say let's go to the gym together, like that's like <laughs> saying, hey, let's go out for a beer. It's never going to be like full go, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like it, it's not going to be the most wild ride you've ever had. But I mean, you're there, you have a nice time. And <laughs> it's something, back, you know. Hey, Ugh. chapeau, my friend. I never thought I'd ever hear you say the words. You just went to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, but just out of curiosity, because I am, um, you know, a bit of a gym freak myself, what sort of numbers you're pushing on the bench press? wasn't doing bench press. I was actually doing dumbbells. Okay. Um, just a couple of 10 kilo in each, 10, ten, ki ten in each hand. Just, yeah, up and down a few times, you know. <laughs> it's all just, it's all, it's all about movement. All right? <laughs> so, let's just... <laughs> Let's just remember that. And remember my fitness goal. Let's just try not to die before 40. 10 kilos on each hand. Yeah, no, but I have to say, I have to say, James is, we've been comparing our, our little whoop stats. Obviously, I'm not wearing my whoop today. Um, yeah, just you're a lot of, less stressed than I am, by the looks. <laughs> I've not been stressed. I've just very poor recovery. Yeah. I mean, well, Monaco weekend itself, I was mm, sitting pretty at an we, average of about 14% yeah. over mm. the four days. Monaco whoop was rough. Yeah, mm. and to add a bit of context, guys, if you're ever under fifty percent on your whoop data recovery rate, mm. you've had a you've had a, a large, large night one. and um, fourteen percent clam average over four days. That's pretty. <laughs> that's <laughs> incredible, mate. Frank Frankie on uh, Sunday had one percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah one percent. <laughs> I, I had yeah, yeah, two percent. <laughs> you went far off. You were telling me you shaved your chest as well. Yeah, first time in five years. I'm uh, looking rather clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good <laughs> <laughs> good to hear uh, it. okay so we've gone over my whoop van should we return to what we've been doing oh well i'm here in i'm here in uh, london as you can see james yeah yeah yeah. i flew in this morning um okay. i'm not i don't where really was remember I? asking you that I, you've gone on your own tangent here <laughs> I yeah i haven't actually finished my question yet. oh, oh <laughs> no, i'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway gone. um yeah flew in from chicago this morning yeah uh, i felt better honestly um, no, it was yesterday. Was it your first time in economy? It would have been nicer. Not my first time um, in economy, but I, I did go in economy. And um, boy, oh boy, I didn't sleep. I don't think I slept a single minute. Mm -mm. Like, I've honestly, I feel... You should get one of them neck pillows. I don't know where I am right now. No, actually, it's a, if we're going to discuss our travels that we, we shared in the Southern Hemisphere, the lowest move I've ever seen from a, from a human person... <laughs> We are booked to fly from Auckland to LA, me and Clem together, um, to go and come and see you race an IndyCar. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, oh, mate, yeah, yeah, I'll go, I'll go economy with you. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have a laugh, we'll have a drink, we'll go all the way up there. Sweet. Day before the flight, mate, I can't do it. And fuck, upgrades himself. <laughs> and leaves me an economy on my own. Not that I could afford to upgrade Clem, myself. Clem, mate. Clem. Premium then, economy. And then mate. he bought, and he, he's in the... A boarding group earlier than mine, obviously, because he's on the plane. And so I have to walk past the bastard to get to my shit seat, packed full of <laughs> tourists. So it, was, it was, Mate, that's not backbone it shit. It was not cricket. Oh, uh, yeah, nah. No, a backbone <laughs> sits in the back next to the toilets in economy. Yeah. I was sitting next to the toilets. Just in premium economy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're in premium. Bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I thought so you... It's still a seat. No, but see, it's almost worse because like, you, you're less than 10 yards ahead of me but having a significantly better time. It yeah. was awful. Was no, it, it, was was it worth the trip? Did you guys enjoy Long Beach? Really great time me? in Long Beach. Well, yeah. I mean, you only spent, I spent seven about hours sort in Long of, Beach. Yeah, at, at most, really. Yeah. So sort of that's true, sort of actually. Five hours. Uh, no, I, I came to LA to... Well, just to cruise around, really, um, after my crash in Quali. And um, I came across... <laughs> and a, that was the first time you saw Glenn. <laughs> I came across 
Clement in his natural habitat walking down what's it called Hollywood Boulevard Rodeo Rodeo Drive Rodeo Drive yeah Rodeo Drive uh, with his Saint Laurent t-shirt on and his Rolex um, walking past the Hermes store he said Clem is that you mate he had a bag in hand <laughs> been shopping clearly and uh, he was a little bit steamed as well. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> the usual, really. <laughs> so uh, Saturdays, eh? Unprovoked. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was about 4 p.m. <laughs> to be fair to you, it was happier. And, um, and what did we do from there? We went for dinner, we, and I obviously stayed off the, uh, the bevs, but you had about four margaritas, if I remember well. Hey, it was a, it's sort of the... the LA sort was of, a bit of a blur for us. Right? I think it wasn't just LA for me, really. It's from really the sort of moment the race finished on Sunday night in Melbourne, Melbourne to probably a couple of weeks later. Nice. It's a bit of a blur. Good for you, man. But uh, yeah, no, it was... Um, took its toll on my body, mm. <laughs> really. You said you gained five kilos. Yeah, I had a... <laughs> At a sort of reckoning uh, moment of uh, moment of self-respect, where I just sort of thought to myself, you know, this is not good enough. Mm. It's and not uh, up to the Novelex standard. No, it's just not good anymore. I'm weighing look- as much as James Blair. Something needs to be done. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not fat. <laughs> like, am I? <laughs> Dude, you're looking hot. Yeah, you're looking well. beautiful. Tell me something I don't know. I love the hair. Thank you. What's the I'm what's the sort of length? I'm getting mixed reviews on the Yeah, I was the watching videos like in the plane earlier this week of us like six months ago and I just couldn't recognize you because of the hair. I know. I actually looked on my um, emails before. I've had one haircut this year. And that's, that's a bit rogue. Your hair is looking uncharacteristically not shit mm. as well. Thanks. I mean, yeah, where's, honestly, where's... The, the receding hairline looks to It's stop. much better. I'll tell you what, boys. Um, I've been demanded by a certain person to start washing my hair. <laughs> and uh, since then, I think my hair's looking a wee bit better. Yeah, you actually um, do look a million bucks. Do you reckon he's wearing deodorant, though? No, I don't. I'm wearing not. deodorant. I am wearing deodorant. Holy don't. shit. And I also don't shaved my you, legs don't last Don't tell me you're wearing underwear. I'm also wearing underwear. I don't believe it. You're going to have to show us. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I am wearing underwear. I think I am. All right, let's wind it all the way back to Melbourne, shall we? Because I think we were flying to, you were flying to Melbourne the day after we wrapped up the last one. Uh, no, I was flying to Gold Coast. Yes, sorry. For a week. To go and get steamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday overlap. Well, you know, I needed a sort of, I had a sort of two week sort of rest period and then I thought, Got to go racing. Yeah, how was your... We should actually talk about... How was your race? Let's not talk about Melbourne. the race. I don't yeah. think we need to talk about the... Melbourne was actually surprisingly good. I heard you were fast in the wet. Ah, oh, the usual. Fast in the wet, shit in the dry. <laughs> you <laughs> did it right in the sprint, though, to be fair. You did the same, uh, your same usual trick of qualifying 19th and then doing a really good job of finishing just outside the points. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just classic, your Nova like standard, yeah. if you would. There's nothing worse, is there? Oh, you finish yeah. P11. Mate, you are the king of P11. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Um, You're even car number 11. I'm even car number 11 now, yeah. <laughs> so painful. No, I've been P11 in a couple of the qualies this year in IndyCar. I think maybe three of them. And a couple of the races. And yeah. two of the races. Yeah. Um, it's easy to remember because I've only done six. So you can just be like two eights, two elevenths, and... Two thirteens. No. It's almost like the karting results. You know, you look at your, like when you, you do that four sprint race format, and you sort of... Figure out who was on pole. Now I think that I've only done five IndyCar races. Yeah, actually, you probably have. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Brian. <laughs> uh, did I finish? Uh, I've finished every race. Oh, yeah, I, I actually I heard that you finished every lap that you've. Um, His insurance premium's got to decrease for next year. I don't know, but if you if um, anything changes throughout the rest of your season, then you you do an increase on your premium. Yeah, mate. I, mate, I hear there's a there's a rumor floating around that you know, friend of the show, Liam Lawson, cheated on you. He found oh. he found another insurance broker. Wait, no. what's the fucking go there? I know. So James, uh, I've never <laughs> seen the look of, such look of shock coming out of his bedroom at six a.m. <laughs> as he'd seen the sort of. I was violently throwing up. Oh, uh, <laughs> you were struggling. You know, we talk about them eight paracetamols in a tactical cry. Uh-huh. James was firmly on the old bog swing in the paracetamol. <laughs> I, was wonder, I, was wonder, I was wondering what this gesture was for a sale. Like, oh, not that bad. Like. But no, so basically, yeah, I, I saw a mate of mine 
who follows some other insurance broker on Instagram, screenshotted uh-huh. his story, sent it to me. It was this whole write-up about how he's just done insurance for Liam Lawson. And I thought, where is this man's loyalty? Oh, yeah, no. We need to invite Liam so back on just the finish sh- the wine before we, you start speaking? We need to invite Liam back on the show. I would like to hear about Japan. To, um, hey, it's fucking flying. More so he's just to explain himself. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, yeah, no, it should be a sort of re- moment of reckoning. He should also, yeah, he should also be explaining himself. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, that kind of behavior is... Um, Quite. It's questionable. And, well, I th- and I think it's the kind of thing that Helmut Marko is going to have to take into account when he's looking at who's going to be in his four seats he's got spare next year. Because do you want the kind of guy who's, you know, stands by his mates and supports their businesses? Or do you want the kind of guy, you know, he's probably going to be banging monsters out the back of the garage <laughs> after every session. By the way, he carries on. I genuinely think that there's a clause in the contract in Red Bull. If you had caught drinking monster, you're out. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I know there is. Oh, wow. And that's why I, I always order monster when I go out uh, on the lash with a couple of the lads. Uh, James, I hear you're an uh, influencer now. Tell me the go, mate. Is it like, what, you're a full-blown influencer. Happened? You've gone no. to... Like, these podcasts used to be us two bashing you for <laughs> an hour. And and now I'm He's an here influencer. on my own, and I've just been. Out, but yes, I am an influencer. I'm well, look at the important. shirt he's wearing. You would not be wearing that shirt if you weren't an influencer. I know. And he's me, got the Rolex as well, and the Whoop iron, band. Yeah. Minus the sort of poor ironing technique, yeah, the really. Shirt. Yeah. From that, that shirt that you last obviously wore in in Abu Dhabi last year when you were fully steamed on the dance floor of the W. Um, Actually, it was the worst hangover, of, uh, second worst hangover of my life I had in this shirt. Yeah. In Abu Dhabi. Well, anyways, yes, so you, you, you've become a full-blown influencer. I mean, you're getting the likes, you're getting the followers. I mean, earlier this week, he was telling me if he's not at 10K by next month, he will be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was gonna... <laughs> so I, I heard that there were a lot of fans you were very sought after in Melbourne. There was, it was backbone galore in Melbourne, oh, I have to say. To be fair, I wasn't even in Melbourne, and I could just I could see the catastrophe on social media. I was getting so many messages, photos of you. Yeah, it was no, no, the thing is... The, the, the I signed somebody's thing is, Vegemite jar. No, the, the, yeah, no, we did, actually. That's bizarre. The, the, the best thing about it was walking into that paddock. You know, I'd obviously sort of been a member of Formula 2 a couple of years, and a few pictures asked here and there, but I walked in, not a single picture. Man of the moment, James Blair. He's I'm like old. the world's most famous insurance, broker. insurance broker in the world. He is. And uh, man of the moment. Don't hate really. the player, I hate the game. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him sipping on his wine there. No, it was fun. Melbourne was great. And there was a bit of a different reception at Long Beach, wasn't there? Massively that? so. There was only about three people in New York. <laughs> most of them being your mechanics. <laughs> That's one of... Uh, it's a great thing in America is... Um, I'm there's a whole new audience of people mm. like uh, there's a when you go to a, like an indie car race there's there's ridiculous amounts of people there but I, at the moment I honestly I don't think anyone knows who I am yeah but the really cool thing that I saw from that race on Sunday obviously I was hung you over as shit yet. you were hung over as shit and then we only got to watch like the first sort of five half laps. of the warm up lap before we got kicked out of the pit lane and then yeah. we couldn't find somewhere else to watch it because he needed grandstand tickets so thanks for looking after us mate and so then we ended up You're going welcome. back to the truck and going to a bar because we were like, let's just go get steam and we got tequila sort of margaritas all afternoon and then um obviously as the race finished uh, beautiful video taken by a fan of of me greeting <laughs> yeah. you after the race obviously you little steamed. did that no i was out my mind <laughs> mate <laughs> we, we were back <laughs> You can just see, by the way, I sort of grab hold of Marcus really slowly. The thing is, I I don't know the difference anymore. Oh, yeah. You're steamed so often. Oh, <laughs> I I don't think I've had a sober hug with you since 2017. Oh, just earlier. But really. that that beautiful. You we'll, so we'll throw it up on the screen. We'll throw it up on the screen a for everyone to see. Beautiful video uh, of us three just sort of group. It was a great moment. moment. It was it was lovely. It was a great moment. It uh, was a real highlight. That was a that was a. There's nothing better from my perspective. When my boys are there, finish a race, and we're like, right, let's go to LA. Let's have like a couple of drinks on the rooftop hotel. Couple. 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 Thanks uh, to whoever. I don't think I've ever seen that many glasses of tequila on the table. Yeah, we didn't drink it though, mate. Remember? No, no, no. It was just. To be fair, we actually did. (laughs) You did. Where was I at this point? No. (laughs) All right, we'll go for it. They were closing the bar. We were the last people there at that hotel bar at the roof there. And then they said, oh, we, gotta, we all want to go home, basically. And we said, oh, well, can you just sell us a bottle and we'll just stay here and keep 
for her and I said put her on drinks and they were like yeah, no <laughs> so we said well what's the next best thing so you ordered 18 shots of tequila which they did like they salted the rim of the glass and e- like put effort into every single one of them <laughs> oh. only for me to drink about half of one and then we left and went to the club <laughs> Yeah, I knew that No Black was paying for that, so I was like, "De douche, let's just get 18. Yeah. The thing is, I really... I didn't go to the club, by the way. No, you didn't. No, you didn't, but we to be honest, going to that. that was just... I don't really remember and then anything. we got spikes in the nightclub. So, uh, returning to the race itself, um, James, we know that you're a big fan of IndyCar. Mm. And mm-hmm. um, now, how would you compare a race weekend at IndyCar to a race weekend at an F2 as a spectator? Good question, yeah. Um, from my perspective or like a fan perspective? Because I both. have a bit of a go, different go, experience. Go, go for both, both, yeah, both, And go, get another glass of wine while you're at it, man. Yeah, I want to hear the honest truth. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> from, from a fan's perspective, IndyCar's better. Um... There's more stuff to do. They're more they're more aware of the fact that not everyone's going to watch uh, IndyCar, Indy Next, whatever Porsche series is probably going on, mm. and what it like and, and Emza, sort of stuff, yeah. you know, most a lot of the people there just want to watch the IndyCar and then see some cool shit. Yeah. So Long Beach is awesome because they've got that convention center there. So there's basically like this whole car show going on mm. inside, which could be a ticketed event of its own right right next to the IndyCar paddock where it's all happening as well. So like that's super, super cool. Whereas Formula One's just Heineken tense, people saying no to you before yep. you've asked them a question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's, it's still great. I mean, like the, the F1 product has gotten better and better over the last probably... Even in person, you think? Years. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's sort of become a little bit re- less restrictive, but it's still very sort of squared. It's, well, it's a bit more like fun i'd say i'd almost put go as far as like saying formula one's put like a thumbnail on their product where they've made it a little bit more colorful and bright but then if we look at it from, from your perspective from my own perspective mm. f2 is pretty cool yeah fucking hanging out with novi it is actually like the f2 paddock's pretty cool but, just, um, just because but, of the people that are there or yeah just being sort of like i do get the attraction of the exclusivity factor that certain backbone events with Formula One have. Yeah. And if you are in a position like myself, lucky enough to have the right people to talk to to get access to various things, yeah. then, I mean, it's awesome. But yeah. I think for... Well, yeah, you're kind of a big deal, mate. He's talking <laughs> about Monaco, mate. He was the one asked on the boats, not me. It was like, oh, James Blake. I was basically... Anyone. Yeah, basically Monaco, I spent three days pimping out my friends and I have absolutely no issue with that. Wasn't it me that was uh, giving you the contacts from America? Well, I mean, standard Marcus Armstrong response of like, here's who you need to talk to, now go and do the work. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, look, again, no issue with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was great work. I enjoyed myself. So the Monaco Grand Prix was good then. Monaco Grand you Prix enjoyed was it. Yeah. I actually, I know for a fact you enjoyed it, mate, because I, I got a FaceTime call from, from you. It would have been on Friday night and... I was, uh, where was I at the time? I know as much about this FaceTime call as you do, Clem, because I was absolutely So dinged. I was, I think I was just coming back from the gym and I got, a, I got a FaceTime call from you. And I have never seen someone so steamed in my life. Yeah. He was shouting at the top oh. of his voice through the, uh, mate, I can hear you. The microphone's right there, screaming and then <laughs> abusing his friends that was at you too and a whole I, bunch of I don't people. think I was there anymore at that moment because I sort of left to go to a dinner yeah you went to the dinner. moment the, the apparently the really sort of started to yeah fall the off wheels started to yeah, fall yeah, off yeah, at yeah, James yeah, yeah. Blair because you're already sort of bottled deep <laughs> one then, yeah no no a couple a maybe. couple yeah, yeah no yeah, it was yeah. a couple of bottled deep but the sort of booze hadn't kicked in right and this sort of moment I left I walked into to, to the, the tent the next day sort of the paddock the next day and Rory came up to me and he said, fucking James was in a state last night. And I was <laughs> like, what do you mean? He said, oh, mate, he thought he was f- going to take over Formula One. He thought Formula he was Freddie One Mercury for a couple of hours. Freddie Mercury yeah, and whoa, all sorts. It was but bad. Anyway. Well, yeah, like, my, issue, my issue with um, wine is the alcohol. Really? So, yeah, basically, we got to the end of Friday. And I, I said to myself, well, let's just go to... There was a nice bar up on the sort of wharf outside the harbour mm-hmm. 
let's just go there and we'll just drink rosé for the afternoon. Perfect. Great setting. And then I was finished one glass, as you've just seen, and I'd like another and another and another. And then... Well, rosé, were you drinking rosé? Yeah. yeah. So rosé is dangerous, mate, because... L- mate, literally, I sat down for a, a nice couple of glasses of wine, Clem left to go to dinner, and then I woke up on mm. Saturday morning. And that is as, as my night proceeds. Look, you, you guys had the time of your lives uh, that weekend. I was at the Indy 500. Um, great event. Called you actually. You were in a cafe, the watching qualifying, if I remember. <laughs> True. Okay, but for the race, I I was there. Uh, oh, okay. I wasn't racing, obviously. I was sitting on Palou's pit stand, and man starting off pole. As he well. was starting off pole. Unbelievable was... experience, mate. I have never s- a lot of stress before the race. To be honest, mate, no. Really? I've like that whole crew. You wouldn't think you were just about to roll out for the Indy 500. That's like, crazy. Those boys, Alex. To be fair to him, cool as a cucumber, having a good laugh before the race. To oh, f- he sort of did a Novi like back in Zandvoort when it didn't work. Yeah. I, always, I always think <laughs> there's like there's two types of driver on that front. That's either fuck off, don't speak to me, or like super happy to just have a chat and throw the helmet on and drive. Which one am I? Uh, you're the fuck off type. <laughs> Which one am I? Through and through. You're the polar opposite. To be fair, I don't like to be talking and socializing before I get in the car. Why? Well, like before, like a practice no, session. Okay, or of course, sure. of course. But what, what, what is the the reason exactly? Do you feel like you're getting out of your zone? Well, not really, mate. It just, it's you like, just think, it's just it. annoying, and I don't like to talk to. I only like to talk to you, Clem, uh, before a race. But it's almost like you're in such a. You've been like preparing for something for so long, mm-hmm. and you can do all your chit chat and all that beforehand. But like ten minutes before, it's just like, can I just have a bit of time, please, fellas? It, uh, you laugh actually um i was just about to roll out for quali and indianapolis road course and my engineers will be listening to this they'll be laughing and they were having a good old chin wag about something that was on the roof or something of the pit stand and uh, someone will testify to this and i just said fellas like i'm just about to roll out for quali can we like stop talking please and then there was like because on an indie car, you have like an open channel. Oh, for everyone. So you, you hear everyone. Oh, yeah. At the same time. I'm like, fellas, no chit chat. I'm about to fucking do quality. Bosh. No one spoke to me for like 10 minutes. And then guess what? P13. <laughs> no, I was actually. <laughs> indie quality was pretty good. It wasn't higher than 11. Was it 11? Well, 11's your equal best, so. It was 11. Yeah. But in any case, I felt like I did a good job. Uh, and my engineers will be laughing right now because I couldn't have said it in a rude way. I love you guys, don't worry. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I you're Scott an, Dixon. You're, you're an asshole before any <laughs> session, mate. Scott Dixon, he's so chilled. Yeah. I mean, after 350 Grand Prix in an car, you can understand that he's like proper. They do call him the Iceman. He's he so was, chilled. He was dubbed the Iceman before Raikkonen was. That's a fact. Is that true? That is actually a fact. You don't question James Blair on Scott Dixon. Yeah, to yeah. be fair. Yeah, I mean, people have died for less. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the Australia trip was just a bit more of a blur, really. I mean, it's not really much actually, to mention. To, to be fair, we had a great time on the boat. We went on a boat in Melbourne? Yeah, no, not in Melbourne. Uh, sorry, New Zealand trip. Oh, New Zealand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real good. <laughs> That's how Melbourne went. Is that you said on the boat in Melbourne, and I was like... Tell me more. <laughs> I didn't even question that we could have been on a boat, but no, no, we it. went on a boat in Melbourne. But no, 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 we had a really good time in New Zealand. Actually, I was yeah, sailed was, around the Hauraki. Well, the thing is, yeah, Hauraki. We you were sailing sailing around the Hauraki with radio Hauraki, tuned to the max, baby. <laughs> as we were on the harbour there and listening to old Jason Hoyt going backbone and Mogi going, yeah, good Eden. <laughs> 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 and Keezy going Dadoosh yeah. Ice to the front And uh, yeah, yeah no, Ice to so the front James Ice to the right. front James And uh, yeah no We had a great old time On the boat there We went to um, Waiheke Island We did Which was really good uh, It was cool being out On the boat again Never uh, It'd been a long time Since I was out on the boat And obviously Steve And your friend Simon Simon <laughs> Took us out for a little boat trip, and uh, it was cool. I heard you also hung out with my dad and sister. Ah, oh, yeah, me and Rick like this. I mean, we we were talking about it before the, before this sort of podcast. I think uh, my dad loves mo- you more than he loves well, me. Well, the thing is, I think the last time Marcus mentioned a text from his dad before a race, sort of wishing him well, 2014, and, uh, 2014, yeah. 2015, and then obviously he met me, mm. and uh, since then it's every race. Rick Armstrong, you go on, son. 
Give it some beans. Does, does he actually say go on son mm. yeah, that yeah, uses yeah, those yeah. words? He calls you Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's maybe still not sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Poor Rick. He's going to be watching this. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> Um, yeah, you said he's taken you uh, under his wing. Massively Quote. so. Obviously, I mean, thanks to um, Armstrong's and, and obviously himself, we had a beautiful Citroen. Citroen C5, <laughs> the Screaming Mobile. It's the Screaming was... Mobile. I yeah. tell you what, mate, that car couldn't ride better over Rouse the speed car. pumps. I mean, sorry <laughs> to Drew for the speed ticket. Yeah, we don't get a... <laughs> mate, so we handed it back. We gave it back. And not only had Clem got a speeding ticket for doing 28 clicks over the limit, uh, we also <laughs> left an in the back seat in a pair of Clem's underwear. Oh no. Were they clean? Were they <laughs> no, clean undies? Not as a joke. We actually just left them in there. It was a genuine mistake. So hold up. Were they clean undies or not? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. So you're, you're telling me that Drew had to go <laughs> fish through the back of the car, find a pair of Clemmy's undies. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the weird thing about that text that he sent us was that it was like five weeks after we handed the car no, back. No, because that was when the speed camera picked it up and they got it through the mail. No, of course, speed camera, yes, but I'm talking about the stuff in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. must have been like that car was left on the side well, for no, about five weeks. Well, no, because he said it's like a media car, so they use it for filming and yeah. giving over to assholes like us, but... Uh, yeah, so they must have just gone to groom But yeah, it. it rides great on the old speed bumps. It was like a spaceship. It was... It was Amazing. Honestly, <laughs> grandiose. I hope they use this as an ad. This is unbelievable Citroen. promotion. Citroën. It, it was a great car. I good. guess we should talk about racing at some point, shouldn't we? we? I think we should. Mm. All right, what race do you want to talk about? Um, what's been your favorite of the year so far, mate? For, Question. For um, every... From a bar Monaco TV, TV, not you don't have to be there as in like the race it's that up. I've watched. Yeah, that's been of great. us though, not of you. Okay, of you two. Yes, that's harder <laughs> uh, to answer. Probably what a derb brain doesn't watch, mate. He's too stained. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Azerbaijan was good because we scored points. Did you B7. score points at Azerbaijan? The C split in front of me. Yeah. Oh, did it? Someone took everyone out? Oh, it was... A, no, just everybody forgot. <laughs> Helga crashed from the lead. Martin oh, Pence crashed right. from like well, second I, and took out full. That Bam looked terrible. Took the W. It looked Gross. terrible for F2 that moment. Well, the thing is, because of the, the pressures, I think it was. The pressure got to you? No, 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 no. It's in like... You know in Baku, you've done the restarts there. The yeah. first lap, you just don't have fronts. Man, I fucking took Well, you threw one. a win away because you ran into the back of Yuri. Yeah, I did the same thing, man. Except I had Yuri to use as the brakes. As the brakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looked so bad for F2, man. It was... It was <laughs> I mean, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I found myself... Yeah. The, the, the funniest thing that a lot of people don't know is obviously Victor and, and Dennis had gone into the wall at turn one because they just didn't have any front. And so I see all these shunts left, right, and center, and I'm thinking, fuck me, I'm picking up a lot of positions here, fucking grouse. And then I go into turn two, and I kid you not, mate, I was this far from hitting the wall because I didn't have fronts either. I was by myself, no pressure from behind. Easy as a snooze. Easy as a snooze, did you say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was a snooze, and I was relaxed, and all of a sudden I see the wall, and I go, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And I, one of those ring a stinger moments. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, God. <laughs> yeah. So, that, I mean, look, if we're going to return to the question, yeah, that was good. I mean, it was a good result. Yeah. P7. Um, your P8 in Long Beach was good, although I couldn't really comment on the race because we didn't see any of it. We just saw the inside of a tequila bar. Yeah, I heard that. Um, then... I'd say my favourite race of the season for IndyCar, um, mate, Detroit... It, it was your favorite one. It was so much fun. Was it a bit like a um, being back in New Zealand? It was like <laughs> the you way you were appalled at the track, though. The way that Jaden Dodge, Jaden Dodge, he was there. he described it as stock cars. Like he he was in disbelief. Was he there? No, he watched it on TV. Oh. But he was like, and it, it seemed like that from the outside he as said well. Stock cars. Yeah. That's like, where I'm ending up next year. <laughs> <laughs> what Brazilian stock cars? Probably. Uh, but stock cars in New Zealand is like dirt. Oh, you know that's probably where I will actually end up. Yeah, I think it <laughs> is anyway. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, James. Stock cars is dirt, right? Yeah. Dirt ovals. So. 
um, in New Zealand. And it, like, mate, nose to tail, just, you can just, the braking zones are so long because it's so slippery that you just lunge someone from like 10 back and just like, hope it stops. Oh, mate, you just had so but many the, close calls down at that happen. Oh. One with my teammate. No. Yeah, with Eric, you so nearly went into the back. Rule number one, markers. mate, don't crash with your teammate. Yeah, and that who's was, leading the championship? Who was leading it? No, I think it was P two in the championship. Okay. Still, yeah, uh, don't crash with your teammate. Yeah, no. Um, I went in hard and had both fronts locked. And you know, like when you just lose downforce, and you're like, oh shit. Do that again. You want me to do it again? Yeah. yeah you please. do a good impression of a locking up wheel, don't you? That's good. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sounded like an awkward wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a. <laughs> Wait, are we still talking about tires? It's <laughs> like... a lot of shots coming our way. Your turn, James. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded more like a tire on the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like locking the rears. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a fucking I did dolphin. A lock. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, I think is what you said. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I felt. So I had that sound as I turned in, and I was like, oh, dear God, Ooh. please, not Ericsson. And um, missed him by the the smallest of margins. A smidge. A smidge. Um, but I also did that a couple of times, to be fair. And it was like, it was a full-on hack, man. It was so much fun. It was like casting. Mm. The track looks real bumpy. It was bumpy. Mm. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, my hand here. It's all, all bandaged oh. up. Massive injury, as you yeah, can see. Yeah, I noticed that on the handshake. I was like, oh. Are you sure you're right? I don't know, mate. It's can you finish this this sort of pod? I don't think so. <laughs> it's a dire situation, mate. Yeah. Uh, um, no, it was bumpy. Um, like, I sent you guys a, a photo of the track on the track walk, and I was like... No, it wasn't really a photo right. of the track. It was more of a, how the fuck are we supposed to race here? But... To be fair, mate... There was, was a lot of marbles it. as well. A lot of marbles. Bumpy. Yeah. Like... In theory, not a good place to go car racing. No. But Maze. In real uh, in reality, no. so much fun. Yeah. Oh, one, that's cool. One right? of the most fun events I've ever gone to. Really? Yes. I didn't expect you to say that. To no, seriously. Yeah. And how was the overtaking? Because obviously street tracks normally is a bit of a ball eh? Just but send it, mate. Because they put in they just kind of got around the issue by the obvious solution of long straight sharp corner. Yeah. It's pretty hard to get it's one of those easy around Monaco recipe. though. I mean I I was thinking about this over the Monaco weekend. And you know where they've got the bus stop chicane? Yeah, bus stop yeah. chicane. You mean the swimming pool? No, bus stop no, chicane. No, the, the chicane, the slow chicane. Oh, the yeah, 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 of course. In front of the yacht that you're partying yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if they extended that braking zone a bit, because they've got the room, they've got the tarmac, and then just make it a normal chicane, it would be a better passing spot. There's a lot of things they could do with Monaco. Yeah. I think that it, they need to I don't think they need to... I mean, everyone who's not been to Monaco always talks about, oh, get rid of it, it's boring. You've only seen it on TV. Like, if you've seen it from a super yacht, I mean, you're not saying cancel Monaco. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, but do you know what, James? The fact that you just said this makes you an influencer. Yeah, it, it does. Because there is probably... The, the, the percentage of people who will watch Monaco race weekend from a super yacht is so Hi. slim... <laughs> And somehow you've ended up on a boat. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ridiculous. Oh, I know. Uh, no, but even, I've done Monaco from, the, from the, the cheap seats as well. Of you know, man of the people, James Blair. Backbone. Yeah, massive backbone. Um, from a driving perspective, Monaco is pretty sick. Yeah. Like, it's it pretty was... sick until qualifying's done. Why? Well, then the racing's just a bit boring. Yeah, but you've got to like... No, of course you enjoy it, but you just... Yeah, turn Stuck one pretty much tells you everything you need to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, that's it, to be honest. I thought Long Beach was comparable to Monaco. Really? Yeah. Smooth. Well, the, again, the issue they have there is that they've put a, a tight corner at the beginning of the straight. So, like, the, yes. bottle, the accordion you, effect is massive. <laughs> hey, Clem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. What was your favourite part about New Zealand, mate? I haven't even asked you that full stop. The boat. Boat. Honestly. Yacht with Simon. Yeah, it was so cool. It was a Beneteau. It was a Beneteau. Which and is from Avignon, which is where you're from. Yeah, yeah, I own a couple of shares actually in Beneteau. Oh, uh, yeah, do you? Well, it's good, good company to own actually. They're the public company on the market there, yes. and uh, <laughs> yeah, this is probably this is probably bad. This is probably bad timing for this plug. But Simon sold that boat now. <laughs> no, no, Simon has <laughs> sold the boat, but I think for for different reasons. Really, yeah, he wants a bit more of a cruiser. Exactly, uh, but uh, yeah, no, great, great boat. Um, obviously, put me up on the harness there, and I was at the top. Of oh, the that mast. was hilarious. For a good Clem was full mast for about an hour. Yeah, yeah, full mast, mate. Right at the top there. Even had time to FaceTime my mum. Yeah. Obviously, she was just waking and up in Europe. 
And uh, I was full steam ahead on the old mast. You also had a very Kiwi accent. Full steam ahead on the old mast. (laughs) Sounds a bit on the nose, mate. I don't know. (laughs) But yeah, it was cool. You sounded proper Kiwi when you were down there as well. Oh, mate. Come on, mate. You know how it is. Good on you, James. Yeah, thanks. You won't keep talking so that that move wasn't in vain. Um, (laughs) But yeah, no. um, We're moving on to a different rosé now. Great time in New Zealand. Thanks to James, my uh, sort of. Are you coming? Dying? Are you coming to Nashville, Clem? No. Why? Rory's coming. James is coming. Ethan's coming. E- you guys have met yet to meet Ethan. He is uh, James Blair in another body, basically. Yep. Um, yeah, James Blair right, two point right. oh. Huh? Grouse geezer. Another Kiwi. Yeah, another one. Grouse geezer. Yeah, real estate agent in Wellington. Grouse geezer. But um, he might fill in for you on the pod while you're away. He'd actually be, he'd go really he'd good. He'd be real pod. good. Although, I tell you what, if we got him on, Rory's going to die. Yeah, yeah, so. A lot of better singers going to have to go on, mate. Yeah, yeah. He's but, got um, some stories, that boy. Yeah, well, where do you think I am? You're in Brazil, mate. No. Where are you? Ibiza. Yeah, Didn't take that yeah, long. You've got, yeah, you've got <laughs> beefer, isn't it? Where beefer. Yeah. Beefer. What are you, you going to get up to? Yeah, I love the fact that Rory's there. Like, fuck. Yeah, go on, geezer. Yeah. Rory's probably done a few rugby trips down there and, you know, drank his teammates' vomit or some kind of... <laughs> do. I don't know what they do. Those rugby boys, they're all pretty crazy. Mate, I've seen it in person. Mate, the rugby guys are wild. A lot of my mates in New Zealand, you'll know, are rugby players. Yeah. And, mate, the stuff they do on a night out, you wouldn't, you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy, mate. Yeah, like, we all think racing drivers are pretty loose, but, mate, rugby boys, they're different. They're actually they're different. different. They're different. Built different, yeah. Do you know what they are? They're built like a shit brick house. <laughs> or a brick shit house. Brick shit house. <laughs> 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 but, uh, and they, what, what do they play? They bit, play. They either play rugby union you know, or a bit of... Buck my leg. Buck my leg. The shit I go through. Oh, yeah, I know, James. We need to get some structure back here. Mm. Um... We were sort of, um, someone's phoning me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of texts coming in. I know, it probably is someone famous. Uh, It's my girlfriend. (laughs) Oh, have you told her dinner tonight? Uh, No, I'll tell her now. Tell her dinner. Yeah, I'll answer it. Hi. Hi. Um, You're on the podcast, by the way. Um, Are you free for dinner this evening? I'm on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, God. We're we're all going to go out for dinner. Marcus, (laughs) Clem. No, I'm not there. (laughs) Oh, Clem's not there. (laughs) Oh, okay. Um, but I wasn't sure what the plan was because you haven't told me. Anything. Okay, well, as you, as you two are the the pant wearers in both of our relationships, why don't you organise amongst yourselves and book a restaurant and then we'll follow Are you there. coming as well? No. Oh, well, why aren't you coming? You are get? you coming, Rory? I've got, I've got a... Do you want to come for a couple of drinks? I've got DJing. Go on. Yeah, I had a party afterwards, but I've got to have dinner first. Where should we go then? Should we go to Sexy Fish or something? <laughs> Yeah. So James talking about the fact that he wants to um, save money. Armstrong's Cat paying. Yeah, Marcus I was thinking like Pizza in. Express. Fucking <laughs> Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How about 600 down the drain? Okay, can you and organise that and then we'll follow whatever you decide? No, I, actually, I actually can't, James, because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm working. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> He's definitely not going to book it for us. So. Oh, for fuck. Yeah, Once right. again, it all falls on James. All right, I'll let you know where we're going. <laughs> Oh, all right. I'll make a group chat. I'll see you later. <laughs> so, Marcus, next race, Road America. I hear it's a pretty cool track. Yeah, it's a road in America, mate. It's uh, been repaved. Repaved? It's fast. I've uh, played it on iRacing. Cool track. It is. It's bloody cool. I just finished the test two days ago. Yep. Um, boy, she's, she's, it's like Spa, except like in Wisconsin. So the furthest possible place yeah Melbourne. i heard there's no real airport nearby no there's not and your best friend aaron Rodgers doesn't even play football there anymore i know I mean, best friend I was I mean, gonna... he's idol sorry idol yeah yeah i was gonna wear an aaron Rodgers shirt to wisconsin to the to the track where uh, is aaron Rodgers playing now new york jets uh, yeah really J-E-T-S, moved on up. Jets, 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 jets. moved on up mate yeah it's random um I think I, it's... i've been to a jets game you're going to what austria yes your nah, track it favorite. is mate it one is. of your favorites actually you've always gone well there i don't know what i could tell you for advice james what do you what do you think um, uh if you have a good day on the first day try and make sure your engine doesn't fail on the second that's a good that's good advice or mate 
when the corner goes right, turn left. Yeah, no, that tends to be the case. Um, you and want a lot of front, don't you? Mm, not you, too much. Well, no, but when you look and when you turn, when you're going right and you're turning left, means the rear's coming round. Yeah, I saw at Callum Eilot was the king of that at the Indy 500. What, the rear coming round? Fuck, you know, I felt so sorry for him, eh? What happened? Because he was just like on the ropes from start yeah, to, to finish. Yeah, he like some people race to win the in the 500 and some others just race to finish, you know. Mm. And he was yeah, just... Hold on. And by chance, he had like lucked into the strategy of a lifetime. Like he had boxed the lap of a safety car. Oh, un- and it, oh and, I do remember that. And he yeah, came yeah, out yeah. leading. You That's sh- right. You should have seen my face on the pit stand when I saw him leading. <laughs> I was like, is that Eilot leading <laughs> the, the 500? <laughs> <Face. laughs> It was just so I bad. was like, I was shocked. And I turned to the guy next to me. I was like, is that <laughs> right? Is he leading? Is he pitted? Same strategy. Oh my God. He's leading. Okay. And Callum, I, I was just like, watch, the watch, watch him just pull the handbrake here. <laughs> 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 Poor Cal, mate. He was done by two people before the first corner after the green flag. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Poor Isla. Like, I felt, and to be fair to him, he fucking, he hung in there. He... He fucking grit his teeth and he kept, I think he was top 10. You're saying you felt bad for him as though you weren't pissing yourself I was pissing myself laughing. No, I, but I could see like he was just on the ropes, you know. <laughs> but I was like, come on, Isla, there's only like three laps to go. But it was like red flags and all that. I think he finished. I think he was just outside. I think he might have been P12. He just, I don't know he why finished I might have that out of my ass. And he was so happy. Like, it's Yeah, he good. had a fucker of a month there to be fair to him. Mate, I felt so sorry for him. Like, even from the outside, you could see, like, it was so edgy. Mm. Like, there's nothing worse than driving a racing car. Like, you in the old, um, the, what we were driving last year, the Merc. When yeah, you turn yeah, yeah. in and you're already losing the rear before you even turn in, mate, there's nothing worse. Mate, you just needed to have a bit of faith in that. I was rapid. Just remember, I risked I risk my life sitting in the passenger seat with him, going around a racetrack. I okay, had some. Well, about risking your just... life, mate. Who was in the back with no seatbelt trying to get a fucking <laughs> video of you two? It was fucking roaring. <laughs> <Go> roaring. <laughs> no, I, I did some more driving recently. As uh, after uh, I saw that. Go on, yeah, Zambo. It was actually all right, mate. I went okay. We'll throw a photo up we on the screen. That photo up, I, I thought it was James. Uh, yeah. Passenger seat. So <laughs> I met uh, a lovely chap by the name of Luke Hartog, who's in uh, Carrera Cup this year. Mm. I think he's. He might even be leading it. Really thoroughly nice bloke. And I only recognised yeah, some of the Rory the next day when I saw the photos. He looks exactly like me. Like we could have been separated at birth. Poor chap. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he gave me a bit of coaching. And I think this, this is testament. So I ended up... You don't need s- coaching, mate. You're a natural talent. Well, you, you were calling me a in the braking zone at T1 in Goodwood. So I couldn't, that was set a bad precedent and tone for my lap. So mm. your coaching was shit. Um, I ended up... Thanks. Two seconds off uh, Ring of Andersander. Two seconds. Mm. That's so, that's so like that? the equivalent of it's like, like two hundred car lengths. That's not that bad. Two hundred. That's Fuck the equivalent off. of You've half. been two seconds off in qualifying most sessions this year, so you can pipe it. Two hundred car lengths off Ring of Andersander. I mean, to be fair, Renga is an absolute wagon, wagon driver. driver. Yeah, and I'm a fat, aging, graying insurance broker. Oh, graying? You're, you're not that graying, mate. I'm going, to, mate. Tell me. <laughs> Now that you're back in town, it's going to change colour in about fucking three hours. Watch. Yeah, well, um, I heard a bit of a different story from Renga. He said to me that you're an absolute wagon driver and you're a nutcase as well. Yeah. Crazy. I remember that. When you were in car sing, you always you didn't lack confidence. <laughs> what you lacked in school, you gave confidence. I made up for it. <laughs> Probably not incorrect. <laughs> You never, you never had the the honour of racing against no, James never. Blair and casting, but mate, whenever it was wet and you're on slicks, this oh. boy, the giraffe they called him, would come through. <laughs> the pack. Can we well, can we add like another sort of adjective to it, like this sort of the neon giraffe? <laughs> well, I had the pleasure of watching James race actually in yeah. um, oh in Buckmore Park, a couple of. That's right. A few months ago, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were obviously down there doing a video with uh, with Quadrant, and uh, and James Blair was the surprise of the day. Tell me about it, man. I saw the video. I was sat on the sidelines there, and obviously you were racing against uh, a young kid, uh, Kit Belovsky. Kit Belovsky, uh, one of the young guns going through uh, KFJ, I think, at the moment. Yeah. 
James Blair was not not only holding to him, he was actually catching. Right. I was mesmerised at his pace to the point where obviously me, Max, Lando had a bit of a shit fight towards the sort of last 10 laps just for a bit of fun. But James Blair was actually faster than me around the go <laughs> That's carrying, actually true. Carrying probably about... Another eight kilo? At least. And on the 11-year-old, <laughs> Velocity was probably had about 35 kilos on him. Hey, James Blair, second fastest lap of the race. And that was actually probably only second because of the fuel effect. Probably. Yeah, was he in a Prima cart? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was That's actually... That's clipped up. <laughs> we, should, we should go karting again. We, I want to go karting, mate. To be honest... Should we go tomorrow? We should go... Um, when, when do you come back to New Zealand next? Not, neither of us live in New Zealand, so what's that relevant to? When are you coming to New Zealand? That's what I'm asking. Uh, the next time I'll be in New Zealand will probably be 2025. What? Yeah, at the very least. What about you, mate? 2030 <laughs> something like that he's actually not allowed back for a while <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no so no Rick actually wants me back ASA fucking P no he does man he wants you in that hyperbaric chamber you two cuddling up it's weird <laughs> that isn't it that was so funny man no. I, was, I was kind of doing my thing in Auckland which okay I'm from there I knew I had plenty of people to hang out with um, whilst Rick and Glenn were just off like having this little bromance in New Zealand it was no, fantastic the, 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 the funniest thing this, this, this may get cut out I don't know but the funniest thing is I sort of obviously I'd been I, I'd text Paris I was like oh we're in town me and James and so on drive me up do something and she was like oh yeah come to the house come to the house Rick wants to see you and so on I was like okay cool so I came over to the house and uh, sort of unlocked the gate there Went down into the old Armstrong Manor. Palais pa- Armstrong. Palais Armstrong. Parked the castle. car there and uh, opened the front door. And there was Rick on the phone with a big Toyota dealer. It must deal. have been so. He was doing the deal of the year, mate. <laughs> he put the phone down and said, i got to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> and do, do you know what was so funny? The difference in dynamic. He puts the phone down, gives you a big old, I got to get a Clem. Yes. James, <laughs> I was like, that, that is the relationship that Rick and I have. Though, I would, if he rugged me, I'd feel really uncomfortable. But the thing is, he sat back down, got back on the phone, talked to the geezer, tried to make it as quick as possible. Must have lasted five minutes tops. Probably would have been on the phone there for another hour if I hadn't been in. But uh, yeah, so he put the phone down, walks up to me and goes, "How you doing, Clem? All good, mate?" I was like, yeah, my grass. <laughs> and then he goes, "What are we drinking?" I go. Whatever you want, mate. Pops over to the old fridge there. Opens the door. Dom Perignon. Rosé. Rose. <laughs> Magnum. <laughs> opens the bowl. Starts pouring it. This is so Spins weird. Spins around and goes, not often you've got your favourite F2 driver in the house. <laughs> no. No word for word. He word. literally loves you more than he loves me. Yeah. Ah, but me and Rick have this special relationship. I mean, during that, the, the, obviously drinking that bottle, we were discussing plans, future. Me and Rick are opening our own sort of <laughs> car own... dealership in France now. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be we're... called Rick and Clem's Jam Jars. <laughs> Rick and Clem's Jam Jars. <laughs> yeah, no, we're taking over the world, mate. And uh, yeah. Why don't you start a racing team? No, he doesn't want to lose money. He wants to make money. <laughs> well, nowadays, mate. Well, actually, it, it, they're saying it's now a profitable thing to own a Formula One team. So VW's chimed in at the right time. VW, really? Audi, Audi, oh. yeah. Audi. Sorry, yep. same thing. Um, yeah. Right. Will I get tortured again for having my feet up on the table? No, because you haven't got the grippers out. Right. And also, I'm going to bring this. <laughs> Oh, you two are going to have to, uh, I regret opening my mouth about this already. I got a bunch of shit for posting a photo with uh, Jalen and us two. On the, Jalen James. On the boat. And I have my feet out. It was, but you have to take your shoes off when you board the boat. But you have ugly feet. That's the difference. Look, that's, that doesn't, it's no matter of difference. Have it's you about, seen it's, James's feet? It's similar feet? to wine. It's no. about etiquette. I've got hideous feet. I'll, I'll confess to that much. Not only feet, mate. <laughs> My feet are beautiful. I care to disagree. Yes. I've got a big toenail. 
This has really gone off the rails now. <laughs> all right, should we end part one here? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right tune, in, tune into part two to find out more about Marcus Armstrong's big toenail. All right, so hey, welcome back to another episode, guys. Um, That's part two of yeah, the well, first part one. Part two of the first one. Just our sort of a little break, like a little water, night, fellas. A little we, water break. We yeah, got... so we've just about ironed them out. Um, and by <clears> that, I mean... We haven't got any. We haven't got we, any. We've decided... Rory, do you want to join us, mate, for part two? Just go on. Come on. I want to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Did you Come hear on. That? Oh. Get in here, Rory. Tell me. Yeah. What's the juicy gossip in the F2 paddock at the moment? Yeah, he knows it all, mate. Um, well, the Why are you looking at me like that? The latest chasing gossip. the dream episode Whoa. was with Campos at their home race. Oh, wow. Mm. And it wasn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> Kush, would you agree a very good rookie this for the first He's done a mega job this year, actually. I, yeah. I forget that he's a rookie, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But anyway, I decided to follow them for the home race. and um, it, Well, you got great coverage in F3. Yeah, it was great. Race win. Do you follow Pepe, F3 as well? Only, well, I was like, well, Pepe, Pepe's doing well. It's his home Grand Prix. Do you follow F3? Only this episode, Green? really, yeah. Right. Yeah, Pepe's a lad. I want him on this podcast, actually. Yes. I have he, He's one of my favorite F3 drivers. Man. I, so the first time I spoke to him, yeah. Spanish bloke, I've met, you know, Roberto Mary, a couple of the guys. They always have a smidgen of a yes. fucking Spanish accent. Walked up at Pepe Marti, he was like, what, geezer? He's I was like, like fuck <laughs> me, he's <laughs> cutting over like 2.0, <laughs> <laughs> mate. 100%. He's, he's yeah. a full English yeah. breakfast. He's and like, no, because... <laughs> full English <laughs> breakfast. Because I was like, I, also, I met him in a, I met him in a transfer from, in Austria from the car park to the track. And I sat in with him and I was like, hey, what's up? And I said hello to him and his sister, and I hello, both very English people, like you, basically. And then I turned to the parents and like, full Spanish, you know, like, hola, hola, hola. <laughs> como estas, muy bien. Buenos dias. And I was like, like, you guys are... What's happened here? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you learn to speak English like that? And Boarding was, school, yeah. most likely. <laughs> I don't, so I didn't actually get an answer. Oh, well, if we we'll get him on the pod, out. maybe we'll learn. <laughs> He's pretty cool. I think he's based in Barcelona himself. So, um, yeah, so we need him on the Well pod. done to him. Yeah, um, massive. Massive. And he won it. Yes, yeah, he won, yeah, yeah. James. Won. Yeah. And uh, no, he got pole. I don't, I don't know who won. Yeah, yeah. Feature race. And Alonso was there, so I was filming well, in part Ferme. Do you know, Fernando drove me back from yes. a party. <laughs> can we tell this story? <laughs> I think I we can. I don't know if we should. We, we absolutely. He didn't drive me himself. Okay. His, his driver. His driver. Okay. His driver took me. We were at the after party in Abu Dhabi a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. We can absolutely tell the story because it's true. And, <laughs> if um, we told stories because they were true, we'd be <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't find a taxi outside the W Hotel at Abu Dhabi. And Fernando's like, Jump in with me, okay. So I'm like, oh my god, Alonso. Great taking... impression, by the way. Alonso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They sound more French than Spanish. But... Alonso, I was like, Alonso's taking me back to my hotel. This is unbelievable. And, uh. G'day! Marcus, we would like to take you in the car. That's what he said. And I said, great. I thought, I, c- I couldn't believe it. I was like, Alonso's taking me back to my hotel. Jumped in the back with him, quizzing me, asking me all sorts of questions. Didn't he run out of fuel? He, so he dropped me at my hotel. I'm like, mate, thank you so much for dropping me to my hotel. And he's like, yeah, we've got like three miles of fuel left. I'm probably going to have to sleep in the car tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, you're joking, right? He's like, no, like, look. I'm like looking at the fuel gauge. He's got nothing left. <laughs> and he's like, no problem. And I just like just drove off. I just left. What car was it? It was like a Toyota Camry or something. It was like a rent- it was like <laughs> Pretty a modest. It was like Fernando a it was like a rental car or something. And he just like that was it. I was trying to remember the other day the name of that guy because we had that rental car in Abu Dhabi when we were there. And do you remember when we got to your hotel and he just wouldn't let us park the car? And he had this Socrates. 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 <laughs> this dude working at the Abu Dhabi Hilton was called Socrates. And we're like, we're staying at the hotel. This is our room number. He was like, no, you're not. And we're like, mate, we are. And this went on for about 25 minutes. <laughs> and there's a queue of 15 cars behind us, all just trying to get home. And Socrates was just being a total roadblock. Yes, he was. Um, but so uh, Was that why you were late to dinner that evening? I was late to dinner. Most I, evenings. I'm late to dinner every You're night. You're late to everything. That's why you were late to dinner. 
Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And Rory, you didn't get to tell us, mate, juicy gossip. Yeah, juicy gossip. Who's been the, the funnest F2 team to follow this year? Um, well, I had a really good weekend with you. Of course. Didn't we? Where was that? Trident's fun. <laughs> uh, it was in Jeddah. You're not always guaranteed trophies weekend. with Clem, but it you're was... guaranteed fun. We have fun. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Giacomo is yeah. a ledge. Giacomo is um, a legend. Giacomo yeah. is a legend. Yeah. I, l- I, l- I love the team. Um, yeah. And I, I enjoyed my weekend with VAR. Why wouldn't you? The Shaw and JM. Chan's a lad. They're, they're just great guys. Um, for sure it's hilarious tall like, fucking tall for he's, an F2 he's a tall boy well. he's yeah. taller yeah, than yeah, me yeah he is he's pretty I think he could have a really good season actually yeah he's, but he's that's the thing like, he something. could play basketball Dude, too you watch F2 and I'm like this guy's on a roll like it was there at one point I was like this guy's gonna run away with Paul it Paul Cher at the start of the season as well Paul Cher as well mm-hmm. disappear it's like what's going on and now it's Behrman Mm. Like this, this well, it's Premier. It's, pre- it's, it's Bearman and Vestia just absolutely yeah. smashing it right yeah, now. Yeah, but we don't know, mate. Like in two races' time, it could be a different narrative. Yeah, exactly. It could be Trident. It could be, be Novalak <laughs> leading the championship by a fucking spa. You know, you never know. Yeah, hopefully. I hope so. Rene looks Woo! confident. <laughs> Rene does? Mm. Yeah. Rene never looks confident. Come on. He looks oh, like he's does. having a heart attack on the pit wall. Maybe this year. Yeah, I don't know. Well, so. When I was in Premier, he was the most stressed man in the paddock and right. anyone, winning, yeah, anyone yeah. around you is the most maybe he's just had more media training from angelina <laughs> yeah to be, <laughs> to be fair i've i quite i'm very keen to do that macau grand prix yeah, yeah it's back how good does that look eh? oh that is a tasty that's a tasty that's a tasty one for you like mate your premium is going to skyrocket in well, mate, three. How many? i'm only two seconds off a, a imps a legend I reckon I could probably. Have I it think that we need every there. screaming man, screaming mills fan, screaming man, <laughs> screaming, <laughs> every screaming man, every screaming mills fan to write in to Rene Rosen on Instagram and say James Blair deserves a seat in F three for the Macau Grand Prix. Okay, that'll be amazing. Yes. To the Prema, to Prema underscore team. All right, James Blair deserves a seat. And on that bombshell, we'd like to. Should we wrap it up there. Yeah. Oh, thank we you very shall. much. Cheers. Cheers.